Pervious concrete is a strong, durable material that allows water to flow right through it. This video will show you how to place and finish it. It can be simpler and even faster than installing ordinary concrete, and many of the tools and techniques are the same. Pervious concrete can come in all shapes and sizes. We prefer to use fine pervious concrete because it looks great and is more user-friendly. Before getting started, ensure the consistency of your mix is just right. This is how a fine, pervious concrete should look. And for comparison, we have a bit too dry on the left and a bit too wet on the right. Pervious concrete is sensitive to drying out while placing. Therefore, we want to keep it as wet as possible without getting it too wet and risk having it seal up and lose permeability. Too wet of a mix could also lead to the paste draining down, weakening the surface. To help maintain the optimal consistency of the pervious concrete throughout the finishing process, Placing first thing in the morning is generally best. Wetting down the base just prior to placing can help a bit as well. Pervious concrete can easily be placed without forms. Screed off rails cut to the desired height, then pull the rails back and fill the gaps. Forms can be used to get an even smoother finish, but make sure they are set a bit above the finished grade to allow for compaction. Form and compact the edges by hand with a steel trowel. Against forms and other hard edges, step on the pervious concrete as soon as it's placed on the ground. Then, add more material and finish using an edger with a minimum radius of 3 eighths to half an inch. A smaller radius than this won't provide enough compaction. Apply a lot of pressure when using the edger. Sometimes using another hand can help. After screeding, a magnesium or aluminum float is used to further level and blend the pervious concrete. The surface is smoothed and compacted using a steel trowel. We like to use a 14 inch pool trowel, one with rounded edges. It also has a long center support so we can use it to apply a lot of pressure. After applying the finish to the first section, blend in more material so the transition between batches is seamless. Continue to finish the pervious concrete as you go along. Begin the curing process immediately by covering the finished area with plastic. This process differs from that of ordinary concrete, which is typically all poured out and screeded, then one comes back at certain times, starting after the bleed water dissipates, to do the finishing in stages. Pervious concrete has no bleed water, so it is placed, screeded, and finished all at once. Pay attention when placing pervious concrete to ensure that each batch is consistent with all the others. Even minor changes in the amount of water from batch to batch can affect the color of the concrete as well as the texture. Inspect each batch to see if more water needs to be added. Or, if a batch appears too wet, it may be best to let it sit a bit before finishing. As the morning gets a little warmer and drier, we spray the pervious concrete that has just been finished before blending it with the next batch. This makes the older material easier to blend with the fresh material and helps mitigate any potential color or texture changes. Spray bottles make great misters for targeting specific areas. When installing a simple pervious concrete path, the crew can be as small as one experienced worker dedicated to the finishing operations, with one worker mixing, providing the fresh material, and assisting periodically. To ensure success in this installation, shade and an automatic mister were used despite relatively good placing conditions. Pervious concrete is easiest to work with when it's fresh. As time goes by, from the moment it's placed on the ground, more effort is needed to smooth and compact it, and more time is consumed misting it to ensure it stays workable. Adding just one worker to this small crew could have doubled the placing speed. With an extra crew member, the shade and or automatic mister would probably not have been needed. Minor blemishes, like a spot that has water dripping on it, or an area that is sealed up, can be fixed by simply covering up with additional material if addressed right away. Larger imperfections should be scraped back and remixed with other material before respreading. Even though pervious concrete tends to shrink less than ordinary concrete, we still like to place our joints according to standard concrete jointing practices. We find it best to create joints in pervious concrete using a wedge, like one of these. Compacting the wedge through plastic, especially very thin painter's plastic, can also work very well. Being a continuous process, it is better to place whole sections of pervious concrete at once. 
If two areas diverge, install an edge at the junction and come back to do the other section later. Once finished, other than covering with plastic right away, pervious concrete should not be disturbed in any way for at least 24 hours. In particular, the six hours or so immediately following placement, it's very sensitive to damage from even the lightest touch. When covering with plastic, create a tight seal by overlapping all of the edges. This will lock in water and ensure the pervious concrete can properly hydrate and cure. If this or the earlier finishing process are not done properly, it could lead to raveling, some of the rock coming loose from the surface of the concrete. For information on this, check out our video, Avoiding Raveling of Pervious Concrete. To ensure proper curing, wait at least four days before removing the plastic. But also be aware that curing with plastic can cause discoloration. For tips on how to avoid this, check out our website, perviousproducts.com. We wish you luck on your next Pervious Concrete project and hope you enjoy the process as much as we do.